general election. Michael Woodhouse. One of the really difficult things the public has at the moment is to try and discern what Labour actually stand for. And Dr Smith has gone through some very excellent examples of that in the realm of education. Uh, and I want to touch on this in relation to fiscal policy because it was a fascinating exchange during question time today when uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, in suggesting uh, opposition parties' advocacy for an exchange rate that was 20 per cent or so lower, received a barrage of interjection from Mr Mallard, Mr Goff. In fact, Mr Mallard even received the withering look from the Speaker as he said something like, don't tell lies. Now, I'm actually very, very interested in this because I know that Mr Parker has just been overseas and he's been blogging about his trip to the US and the UK, quote, and he was meeting with some of the world's greatest economists, apparently, not to listen very carefully and learn as much as he could, but actually to discuss his ideas on monetary policy and the exchange rate. Not to listen and learn, but to tell the best economists in the world what, um, what he thought. And he says in that blog that he agreed, and this was um, quoting Mr Olivier, so he obviously was saying that he agreed with Mr Parker, uh, that countries need to attend to the competitiveness of their exchange rates. I can only infer from that that Labour, and Mr Parker at least, want lower exchange rates. And more extraordinarily, uh, a belief that uh, is, which I believe is Mr Parker, is that exchange rates can be controlled for longer periods than have traditionally been acknowledged by most economists, here it is, without losing the battle to control inflation. So I want members to consider what a 20 per cent lower exchange rate would mean for consumers. So we know those $2 a litre pe uh, petrol prices, $2.80 without any other inflationary impacts. Petrol would go straight to $2.80. What would that mean for transport? Well, a lot of our freight goods are transported by uh, road, by trucks. That's the cost of goods, even that we export. So our exports become less competitive, even though the exchange rate is lower. Imported goods, often those that um, form the basis of the products that we value add and then export again, 20 to 25 per cent more expensive. Home appliances, all our imported electrical goods, 20 to 25 per cent higher. In an inflationary environment, lowering the exchange rate will only add to inflation. Now, I worked for a bank in the 1980s when I was giving out mortgages of 19.5 and 20.5 per cent. Runaway inflation. Nobody can remember what the exchange rate was then. Nobody can remember what the exchange rate was, but they sure as heck know what their mortgage rates were then. And we're now paying what mortgage rates now? 5.75, 5.8% floating rates. I think the public of New Zealand are entitled to know what the impact of Labour's proposal to engineer down, even if it was possible, to lever down the exchange rate, how on earth they would do that without taking one of the biggest fiscal crapshoots in world economic history is absolutely beyond me. But the public need to know what that will mean for their incomes, for the cost of living in their households, and I can tell you, Mr Speaker, it's extraordinarily high. Now, the impact on that in jobs is anybody's guess. But one of the things that I do know is that Labour are very good at telling half a story well. This is a government that is firmly focused on jobs and growth. And yes, there is concern when things like the Kaurau pulp and paper mill, when TY Point aluminium smelter announces plans to reduce hundreds of jobs. TY is fascinating. Mr Parker in the previous parliament decried the fact that they were getting what he described uh, as 90 per cent subsidies. In fact, when we softened their ETS, I think it, it, the subsidy, if you want to call it that, went from 80 per cent to 90 per cent. So Labour were quite happy to do it when they were in government. But that lower exchange rate might increase the value of aluminium exports. That's not clear. But it would certainly increase the costs of production. So yes, it's concerning when those jobs go. But let's talk about the growth in jobs as well. IBM Unitech announcing 400 jobs. Todd Corporation and Methanex adding another 500 construction jobs for methanol manufacturing at Motunui. Uh, the Hobbit, we don't need to talk too much about The Hobbit. Bathurst Resources, a salve on the West Coast, which is experiencing some very challenging times with the uh, solid energy jobs at risk. But Bathurst quietly getting on, growing jobs, growing exports, 
and doing well for New Zealanders, Mr Speaker. The news is very good. It would be bad if we tried to engineer our exchange rate down. Eugenie Sage. Tanakwe, Mr Speaker. 